Hello, I'm Rob Hassett with InternetLegal.com, and tonight I'm going to record my third program in my series, Surprising Answers to Important Legal Questions. And tonight the topic is going to be, what steps can you take to avoid choosing a mark for your product or service that will ultimately be determined to infringe another mark, which would require you to quit using that mark which could happen after you've established a brand. Now there's six things I want you to know before you start running your own search. What I'm going to teach you to know now is going, to, is going to be what you need to know to run it. What we call a preliminary search, which you can do on your own and save some money. But these are the things that I want. All right, uh, the, the first thing I want you to know of uh, the six things is that if your mark is descriptive, what I'm going to tell you, the, the rest of this program is not going to help you. If your mark is descriptive you either of any aspect of the product or service, like anything can be descriptive or misdescriptive, you can't, it, it's hard to protect that mark and the rules are different. Like large cars or small cars, whether the car is small or large, that's descriptive or misdescriptive, which is treated the same way for trademark purposes. So if you have a mark that's um, descriptive, you either need to replace it, come up with one that's not that's uh, not descriptive, or you need to talk to a trademark lawyer. You need to know. Now the test to determine whether what you're picking, what you're choosing is likely is going to be infringing, the test is whether it's likely to cause confusion with the earlier uh, mark. And that is a jury question in most jurisdictions. The jurors go back in the jury room and decide that, but there are certain uh, factors the court will tell the jurors to consider. And I believe the most important ones are, the, first, the similarity of the marks with respect to any logo design, spelling, meaning, sound, phonetics. If your mark is similar, same or similar, then the next thing you need to check out is whether your mark is competitive or related to the, to the other goods and services of the other mark. If they're competitive products, and the marks are similar, you're done. You know, you, you got to pick a different mark. If the goods are related, you're done too. Actually, if, you know, if you're selling Goodyear oil, that's would be considered related to Goodyear tires, and people would think that you were would likely think that your oil was uh, produced, or created, or distributed by um, Goodyear. So it would be an infringement. Another thing that we consider are the channels of trade. Are the pro two products or services sold in the same stores, same parts of the same stores, advertised in the same, same radio stations, etc.? Now the fourth thing I want you to know is if your mark is famous, if you're picking a mark that's famous that somebody else has made a household name like Harley Davidson or Motorola or um, Google, Yahoo, Microsoft, anything like that. You can't use a name that's similar to that or the same as that. It doesn't matter whether you're competitive or whether people would think that you were connected. Because that's called not infringement but dilution, and dilution is prohibited also. The fifth thing I want you to know is how you can obtain rights in a mark because that's important to what you need to do to find out whether someone has a superior right in a mark to yours. Marks can be acquired, rights and marks can be acquired two different ways. One is by using the mark in commerce for the area in which you use it. Two is applying to register in the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office. If you get the registration, it will relate, your rights will relate back to when you first file the application. 
So you have to check both of those. Now, here's another thing, the sixth thing that I want you to know. If you apply to register a mark in the United States Patent and Trademark Office and get the registration, which would, may take a, a one to three years, if somebody else was using the mark in a way that, was, that, uh, that causes your mark to be infringing before you use it in the United States, that person can, for five years after you obtain your registration, file a petition to counsel and get your registration terminated. So you do want to do a full search, to, uh, you do a, as thorough a search as you can to, to avoid something like that happening. Now with that all in mind, you, the che you should check, these are the two main websites you should check on the United States Patent and Trademark Office for uh, applications to register marks and re marks that were, are registered to see if there are any that, are, that you would infringe. And you should also check on, on Google for any that are being used in commerce, not registered, but are being used in which would also be a, a, a problem for you. They have prior, rights prior to yours. So let's say your mark clears the search. Then what? In that case, we highly recommend that you have, have a full search run by an attorney. And you're saying, well, if you did this great preliminary search, why run a full search and spend the money? Well, you need to do that because the full search that the trademark attorney would use is provided by a uh, a service with a uh, great a big huge database and artificial intelligence in their software so they can pick find uh, words that are similar to yours that are spelled differently maybe misspelled differently now you are probably be wondering if you why would you do that preliminary search if you got to do a full search anyway well the reason is to you want to try to find anything that's a problem with your preliminary search by the time you do a full search You've spent six hundred to twelve hundred more dollars, and by the time you've done that, you uh, if you find a problem, you are back to ground zero. You're back to start starting over, and that could get expensive. So if you could have found whatever pops up in a preliminary search, you're gonna feel pretty bad if you um, if it comes up on a full search. Well, that's all I had today. If you have any questions, feel free to call me or email me. You can find my contact information at my website, internetlegal.com. I hope that you will, this, what I've done today will help you pick a mark that you can use as a brand and not have any problems with it. Good luck in your venture. Thanks for watching.